I'm Amy Goodman. Welcome to my studio. Um, I've exhibited with the Society of Equestrian Artists um, since 2006 and now grateful to be a full member. And I just thought I'd show you around my studio and it also includes a lot of uh, my work and commemorative work at this time of remembrance which I think is very important and appropriate at this time. So if we pan around, there's lovely Oswald who keeps me company during the day when I'm doing my work. Um, but on the wall is a life-size canvas showing the clay of the Romsey Warhorse and Trooper that I sculpted in 2014. And they honour the fallen horses, mules and men from World War I. Romsey had a huge revamp depot that trained 120,000 horses and mules that went across to France. And tragically, most of them didn't come back. Um, and so, you know, obviously I wanted to do the best job I could as a sculptor to commemorate them in the, the best way. Here is some of my resource material, uh, so some of my original sketches. At the time I didn't know whether it would be a freestanding memorial or a bench or a wall frieze, um, but as time went on um, we decided once I got the job as a committee that we should do a horse and trooper and show the affinity between them. And so that was my scale model. Here are a couple of my, three of my models, Jimmy Gigi, there was some um, chips and also Warlord, the household cavalry, very kindly invited me for the day and um, they got a horse dressed in the appropriate kit because it was essential that I got all the tack right. And on the wall here, just a few more of my sketches. The life-size armature shows me making the original clay. Really exciting to work at this size. It was my dream to make a life-size horse in clay to be cast. This one was cast in bronze resin by Ryman and Needy Sculpture Castings. You can see, as well as getting the horse right, I wanted to show the, the horrors of war, and I sort of depicted a 17-year-old boy as the trooper, and I wanted to show in his face that deep emotion and sorrow. Um, we can just imagine some of the horrors they saw there. And we go through into my studio. Um, lovely that I've got the ceiling height. It's great when I'm making really tall sculptures, although I can't make incredibly heavy ones up here um, because of safety aspects. Um, but um, if you have a look on the wall, there's some of my steel pieces, as well as making clay for bronze. I also love to weld in steel, and I see them as three-dimensional drawings. Lots of animals and horses. And I must just throw my clay. I'm grateful to be working on uh, a Lovesis Memorial to um, the Gurkha VC recipient, Kulbir Thapa and he's rescuing British uh, Tommy Bill Keithley off the battlefield in 1915. And of course, working on a clay this size, you have to regularly spray the clay with water to stop it cracking. And indeed, when I'm not working on it, um, I'm wrapping it up safely in plastic. So okay, that should do for now. Um, and for, you know, works such as this, um, as I've touched on earlier, you know, I make my drawings. Um, I visited the Gurkha Museum in this instance and they're kindly going to be uh, loaning me some of their kit next week. Um, and just a couple of years ago I finished the life-size Arborfield horses um, and up here you can see uh, the three maquettes with the lines um, of the armature and um, you know this, the armature has to cope with um, a lot of clay. So, you know, for example, the rearing horse Icarus, who's a rearing gunner, a war horse, um, he's got about 700 kilos of clay on it. So, you know, we needed to make something that was incredibly strong and safe while I was making them. And because of the tight deadline at the time, originally they were going to be unveiled in 2018, I made those in um, the actual clay work in four and a half months. Um, but very, very exciting to do that. And just around, you can see some of the reference material and um, Arborfield had a remount depot and a horse hospital. So I was just looking at appropriate images. One of my models, Childerton Icarus, there's a lovely rare breeds farm five minutes away up the road. And he was a great model for my war horse. Um, and the Cleveland Bay is a very, it was a commonly used British breed um, that was used during the war. And uh, there's some more of my work here. And you can just see the making of the life-size clays here before we moulded and cast them. 
So it's a very involved process. So to sort of deliver life-size pieces, you're working with a team of people to get there. And um, it's, you know, great. The relationships are built over the years. You know, you get to know the people, the professionals you work with to be able to sort of install the final sculpture. And, um, so yeah, I can do my welding in here as well as my painting and sculpting. This is a plaster cast of Sid Watkins and um, that bronze is a Silverstone race circuit. This is little trio. Um, I did a life-size full um, dog. Um, he was, um, he sniffed out IEDs in Afghanistan along with his handler. Um, Dave Hayho. It's a very, very special book. It's all about trio, which show, it tells their story. This is Eli, the English Park Bull. I love to make animalia sculpture. And back to the um, commemorative theme, this is an airborne soldier. And I made a life-size version of him, which is in Prince's Gardens. And, you know, I think it's lovely through my work to be able to make poignant pieces so that we can remember the fallen and the sacrifices they make for us. And that's why this time of remembrance, I think, is important for all of us. And particularly for the younger generation. On the wall, a couple of my ink wash paintings. Um, I love sort of working quite quickly, but also leaving something for the viewer's imagination to fill in. And whatever medium I'm using, I love to try and capture energy and movements. And I also like to share the making process, so you know, people can see what's involved. Another photo of the clay, just here. And that was a member of the committee. He had a graphic design business and he kindly um, printed up four views of my clay so people who couldn't come and see me making the sculpture could come and see a life size installation. Um, it's an exhibition I had, um, gosh, it's now five years ago, six years ago. On the wall here, this was um, a great commission to do Pegasus Bellerophon the reinstated insignia of the airborne forces. And this just shows, shows some of the processes of bronze casting. And I work with the Talos Art Foundry, which I'm lucky enough to have on site, and they're a great team. Um, and some more resource material. This is some um, Lyle Edwards sketch in the middle. He very much, that drawing and painting was an inspiration for the bond that I have in the horse and trooper. And that was the most important thing. They're both tired, a little bit thin through having gone through warfare together. The soldier's arm is in a sling. And this is a lovely photo taken by photographer Natasha Weyers. And it shows some of the um, hand-sewn poppies made by the local WI, the red and purple pon poppies. Um, so it's very important that this weekend we commemorate them and remember the fallen. But thank you very much um, for visiting the studio. Thank you.